Setting up your 3D printer in a breeze-proof enclosure is generally a good thing for consistency, for preventing warping, for bed adhesion because you're limiting temperature changes. The only problem with an opaque enclosure is you can't see what's going on in there. That's why I added an Andon stack indicator light to my 3D printer setup in my workshop so I can see the status of my 3D printer at all times. Let me show you how I did it. First off, this printer is an original Prusa Mini from Prusa Research, and I love this thing. This is not hashtag an ad, this is just a little 3D printer that I think is an incredible value for what it's able to do. As far as adding a stack indicator light, I considered it an option driven by Octoprint. That's a Linux and usually Raspberry Pi driven solution that communicates directly with your printer, but I wanted to make use of some features that the Prusa Mini already has. The Prusa has a very basic JSON API, but it doesn't actually give you the status or mode of the printer, just some stats about it like current Z height, file name, estimated time of completion, so this wasn't going to be a super direct option. The Mini does have Prusa Connect functionality, which just serves a little local web page over the network that the printer is connected to, so you just connect a computer pointed at the printer's IP address and you get this little display. Not a lot going on here, but you do get the status, the temperature, total print time and time of completion. It's nice, it looks good. So this is what I lived with for a while, but there's a couple of issues here. First, and this seems like a tiny thing, but every time the Prusa Connect webpage loads, you get this pop-up that you have to click over here and close. And I don't want that. I just want the computer and printer to turn on and to see the Prusa Connect webpage. I'd rather not have a mouse and a keyboard cluttering up what is otherwise an entirely clean, pristine, spotless, uncluttered setup. Anyway, the main problem is that this display on the Prusa Connect webpage is too small to see from across the room, even with a decently sized monitor. It's great if you want to walk up to the printer and see, say, how much time is remaining, but from across the workshop or over at my desk, it can be kind of hard to tell what's going on over there. The solution to the first problem actually led me to the solution to the second. Rather than using Chrome to just auto-load this IP address's web page when I start up the computer, I'm making use of a library called Selenium, which is super powerful. It's a web testing framework that's meant for things like automatically testing your website, say programmatically clinking every link to make sure they work, or dynamically interacting with page elements that I'd be changing due to JavaScript. I'm using it in a really, really basic way. I'm just waiting for the page to load waiting for this pop-up to appear and its exit button to be clickable, then I have Selenium click it for me, and then I just leave the web page open. It's kind of like using a truck to transport a tomato, but it does get the job done. While I was teaching myself the bare bones of Selenium to get this working, I observed that, of course, Selenium can determine what all the elements on a web page are, including their color, their formatting, and their text, including the text up here that says what the status of the printer is. Aha! Isn't that interesting? Now I have a way of getting the status of the printer from the web page. At least that's what I thought. Ooh, this assumption burned me bad. This text up here isn't actually showing the internal state of the printer as tracked by the printer's firmware and ultimately its Marlin uh, 3D printing engine. No, it's just seeing whether it has a non-empty string for the file name it's currently printing. And if it's not an empty string, it assumes it's printing something, so the status is printing. And if there's nothing there, it assumes it's idle. And those are the only two statuses you get. So I ended up doing a kludgy thing where if we're in the quote-unquote printing state, but the Z height hasn't changed for more than five seconds, then I can assume that we're paused. Another kludge on top of a kludge. So now I've got some code that establishes the basic state of the printer. You know, is it printing? Is it canceled? Is it paused? Is there an error? Just sort of the fundamental state of the thing. Which, for a display that I'm looking at from across the room, is all I really want to know. Should I go over and retrieve the print? Is there an error? And so on. To turn this into a display that I could actually see from across the room, I'm using one of these little Andon or stack lights. They're meant for showing the status of industrial factory machines. Now, this 3D printer is much smaller than, say, a giant robot arm, but the statuses are essentially the same. Is the machine running? Is it waiting for something? Is something broken? And so on. You can get really cheap Andons from all the usual online vendors, Amazon, AliExpress, eBay. They're technically not stack lights. They're just a PCB with colored LEDs on it with lenses that slip over the top. So just to be pedantic, I'm going to call these Andons instead of stack lights because they don't 
stack. All these lights that I've seen work in the same way. There's a common positive wire, often 12 or 24 volts, depending on what you order. Then you ground the corresponding colored wire to turn on one of the lights, or perhaps a buzzer if you have it. There's also these little internal switches that make the lights blink instead of stay on. That's not something I'm going to make use of, but maybe it's useful for you. So to control this and on, we need a way to tie one or more of these 12 volt lines to ground. Enter another cheap piece of kit, these USB relay boards available again all over the internet. They're not fancy and they're not great to interface with, but our friend Pavel A over on GitHub has created both a Windows DLL and a basic Python wrapper for it that allow you to do simple things like check or set the state of each relay. I tidied this up into an object model that makes a little bit more sense for my use case controlling an andon, and that code is also on GitHub, link in the description below. You can set the state of each relay, check what their state is, or set each individual relay to be blinking or not. So I can tell what the status of my printer is, and I can control this andon, now I just have to marry the two together. This is what I came up with as an indication scheme. As far as I can tell, there isn't a standard for exactly which lights mean what, but I figure green means good, red is bad, yellow is paused or waiting for something else. I've also seen references to blue, meaning a paused state that doesn't necessarily indicate an error. But for clarity, I just chose a red, yellow, green color scheme with things like green and yellow, meaning good and paused, aka waiting for something to happen. To mount the end on somewhere useful, I came up with this 3D printed enclosure, which I'm actually pretty proud of. It prints in two parts. The lower part mounts to the wall or table or what have you and holds the USB relay board with some strain relief for the power and USB connections. The andon itself attaches to the front plate, the lid, with up to four screws. The andons have a bolt that you can adjust on the side here to change their orientation if you don't want to change the mounting. The wires feed through the hole in the lid and attach down to the relay board. Then the lid slides over the base and hooks onto these two pegs, then folds down and a single screw holds the lid captive. This mount is really meant for securing the andon to a wall, but there's no reason you couldn't put it on a horizontal surface. Then you can add power, USB, run your code, and we're off. Let's see it in action. Here's a print in progress. The indicator light is green to show that we're printing, but if I pause the print, you'll see we go to yellow or paused. Now I'll start it up again, back to green, and later on when the print finishes, we go to green and yellow, stand by and ready for the next print. So now I can see what's happening with my 3D printer inside its sealed box from across my workshop. But also, I have a generic framework for a USB controllable andon. I wonder what else I could do with this thing.